Hey guys, it's been a minute since I've made a Q-tip. Thought we'd put together one and offer another free tool. Have you ever been working inside your PDM vault as a PDM administrator and you wonder, okay, I'm going to use this data export rule and I'm going to create an XML file. And you get that configured and it's working. What do you do with it then? That question comes up more than you would think. If so, today's Q-tip's for you. All right, so we've all had a bill of materials on our drawing, and then we have a bill of materials column set that we've configured, and we've got a nice bill of materials here. But as we all know, data lives and dies inside engineering. No, it doesn't. It has to flow downstream to be consumed. And so that bill of materials right here is just the seed. This is now a document of record and has to be exported to the supply chain so they can enter it into the ERP system through an item master, assembly master, and that has to be consumed. And then there has to be some rules and checks and balances to make sure that any record that gets released or re-released gets updated correctly. Anyway, that's integration 101. We've actually got a tool for you that's really going to help you get along in that process. Okay, let's say we've got this bill of materials and we've got this file that's in CAD ready. XML export rule has to export to a folder on the server, not your local machine. It has to be accessible to the, the folder on the server. And so if I were to look into our server, I've got these XML files there. But you'll notice that I don't have one for the 98833. I'm going to go ahead and release this drawing and create that XML file. So we're going to right click, change state and release. So we're just going to say release and then put a notification in there if we needed it. If not, just keep going. The point is, is the transition is going to transition the file through through the workflow into released. And then this is our server folder. It's actually, it's not a local drive. This is the server folder. And we're going to see the XML file get generated through the data export rule. Okay, we've refreshed the folder. Now the XML file is here. I'm going to open this file in Notepad++, which is my favorite text editor, code editor, all of that stuff. You'll notice that the XML file is all just one long string. Well, if you load the plugin's XML tools, you have the ability to pretty print and indent the attributes. Let's go ahead and do that. Grab everything first, and we have a nice formatted XML file. You'll notice that the elements of XML, transactions, transaction, bomb, bomb header, bomb row, doesn't lead one to believe that this could actually be converted or consumed or deserialized into an object simply because of this guy right here. Plus, if you try to throw this XML file with the lead node as XML at a deserialization protocol, like through a .NET deserialization, it's going to fail because that's an illegal node name. Boy, do we have a treat for you today. We have created an SQL stored procedure that you run inside your SQL server that will actually consume this as is, takes the header rows, basically the column names, and transposes them from, from rows in the column. So that's basically, it's a pivot, just like you would with a pivot Excel spreadsheet. Okay, let's go ahead and put this away for the moment, close that out. Let's go over to SQL Server. We're all familiar with the interface. You may be wondering why would we would create a stored procedure that would create a table and then create stored procedures and all that. We want to help the industry get beyond this barrier, this roadblock of integration. So we created a script. It will create the database, the tables, and the stored procedures so that, and then you will run the stored procedure anytime you need to consume a bomb. All right, let's take a look. It's just a simple SQL script. Actually, it's not very simple, but we've scripted the whole thing so it does everything you need. So let's go ahead and execute it. And it just takes a moment to run. This is a very, very fast script. It completed very quickly. We'll go ahead and close that out because we don't need that now. Then we refresh our database. If you expand the database, we now have a section of two tables. And then if we expand programmability, we have a stored procedure. All right, let me tell you about what these do. The raw data is just a table that has three columns in it. I mean, these can be expanded as needed, but basically it's just three columns. An ID, which is auto-incrementing. XML data, which is a column type of XML. Loaded date, which is a timestamp, and then transform complete, which is a bit flag, a zero and one, so that when you're done consuming that bomb, you can change that flag from zero to one. XML data, however, is the output table from this table. So this was what gets loaded into the, uh, the, the raw XML from the XML file by the stored procedure. And then when you run the stored procedure, it loads all of the data 
into this final table. Now I've set the stage creating a database, table, store procedure. Why? The point is, is that we need to get this data from SQL Server, which is here, into your ERP system. Microsoft includes in their SQL Server uh, suite of tools, uh, SQL Server data tools. Data tools is also part of the suite of SQL Server integration services. It comes with SQL Server. It allows you to create an extract, transform, and load ETL package that takes the data from this table and sends it as an item master or bill of materials master to your ERP system. That's the big picture. When we consume the XML file, it's going to load the entire contents of that XML file into this one column. And you'll see that. And it'll load it as the data type XML. Let's go ahead and run. We've got a script set up so we can run the stored procedure. Whenever this runs, since this is SQL Server, this is actually on the server in the folder EPDM XML export. This is the file that we want to export. We're going to make sure that we've got that file name set correctly in here. Because this is running from the server, it needs to know where this path is. And then make sure that when you run the exec consume XML bomb that you either have the right database selected, which is XML bomb exports, or you use the use protocol. Use XML bomb exports. So that will tell SQL Server which database to run this against. All right, let's run it. We have the results of the XML data that's here, and then we have the transformed data. So we have that, we've extracted, that's the XML file. The transform is to convert this into rows and columns of data instead of just having a long strip of XML data, and then parsing it. And now we need the SSIS to do its part, but it will grab this data out of this table and stuff it into your ERP system. Let's click on this because it is the XML data type. And it, this is our XML file from just a moment ago that's exported directly from PDM. The point is, is that any file that gets stuffed into this folder can then be consumed as XML and then placed into this export so that SSIS can then be configured to take that data package, extract it from here, transform it however it needs to be transformed, and then load it into your ERP system. Again, integration 101, but this should really help you to use the XML export, finally, and be able to actually get more use and more value out of your PDM system. Okay, we have really run around the block today and uh, we've really poured out a lot into this one just so that we could make sure that everybody understood we're serious about integration and we want to help. So if you found anything useful in here, please let us know. Give us likes and comments and follow us on Facebook and Twitter and, and uh, LinkedIn. And, and then make sure that you let us know your thoughts and your comments on the, uh, the Q-tip today. We've really slowed down on producing these Q-tips simply because we just want them to be more meaningful, a little bit longer, and, uh, and, and be able to give out free tools like this. So uh, we'll provide you a link with the download where you can go get this stored procedure to create this database and get you started on your journey of creating your uh, data packages for SSIS and your ERP system. If you have any trouble along the way, let us know. Reach out to us and uh, we'll help you out. We'll get, we'll get you going in the right direction. All right, thanks for watching and believe in the queue.